All right, let's get the, we'll get the party started. Um, and people can wander in or out, whatever you need to do, it's fine. I won't take it personally, it's all cool, we're casual. We're OWASP and the door is open, like go figure, right? It's all good. So welcome to the leaders meeting or leaders workshop or the leaders, whatever the heck we're calling this thing at AppSec USA 2018. Um, I'm part of the OWASP staff, so is Harold. So is Dawn and Lisa. Um, Kelly and um, Karen are out probably wrangling with sponsors and getting the last minute things done with the conference. They should be in in a bit. But otherwise, hello and thank you for being here. Oh, can you ask them if they can hear me on the thing? That's a great question. I don't know if they're getting my mic because I could unmute my laptop if I have to. So, agenda. I actually have an agenda and it's four bullet points. So welcome, which we're mostly done with. <laughs> no? Okay. And then we're going to pause for some technical fixes because we're agile. I wonder if the people can hear me now. So if you can hear me, it would be really cool if you put something in the chat in the go to meeting, remote people. I can see who you are. <laughs> oh, I got a smiley. Oh, that's from Harold, though. You can hear me. That's an anti feature of GTM. Well, let me know if it doesn't change, and I will we'll try something else. But I have my mic on, so in theory, they ought to be able to hear me. Next time we might need to double plumb something or something like that. Okay, back to the agenda. Hopefully the remote people can hear me. If not, we'll figure that out. Um, so let's get let's get rolling. Oh, housekeeping, just general thing. Um, and this is really this is I stole these slides from the town halls we've been having online. So this is not a hundred percent true. But if you, uh, particularly for the GoToMeeting people, um, if you could hold the audio questions till the end, I, I muted all the people on GoToMeeting. Harold will be monitoring the chat in there. So if you do have questions and you're on GoToMeeting. Oh, huh, what? Do He's not, I don't know about Slido. After I have to hear all the okay, awesome. Um, man, you completely derailed me. That's okay. <laughs> The go to meeting, and, but if you want to ask questions, ask them. Like this should be an interactive dialogue. I'm going to try to get through like the beginning bits. It's a level setting about OWASP as quick as possible, so we can get have max time for um, public discussion. And then if there are things that you want to ask while I'm talking and you don't want to ask them audio audibly, we have the Slido, which you can go in. It looks like this, and you can ask questions, and I can answer them, or Karen can answer them, whatever. Um, as well as there's a Google Doc, if you go to the do, 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 Leaders Town Hall Wiki page, which if you put Town Hall in the Wiki search, it'll come up. Um, there is a Google Doc that you can put in comments that you want to live longer than this meeting. So if there's some point that you really want to make like permanent, <laughs> put it in the Google Doc, please, because the Slido, the way Slido works, you can interactively ask questions, but only last for 24 hours. So if there's some you know, point you want to make or, or an issue you want to address, drop it there. Can they hear us now, by the way? They're quiet. OK. Oop, that's not what I want. I did not bring the t-shirts in. We were, we were saving them to the end so they actually stay. <laughs> We may or may not have t-shirts. They're not orange again, because I picked them out. And I'll take, I'll take full credit or discredit for the design. It was a late night inspiration that may or may not be useful. OK, so that's housekeeping, right? That's Slido. So quick overview of OWASP. If there's any people that are sort of new to OWASP, or you just want to know what OWASP works, or just so we sort of level set, and everybody understands the who, what, where, why, what have you of OWASP. Oh, and I did this for the, the online town halls. I, I found a lot of good quotes from Gene Kim because he's a rather clever guy. Um, in high-performing organizations, everyone within the team shares the same common goal. That is part of everyone's job every day. 
And I think we all kind of share that same common goal of getting AppSec into all the various and many, many places it needs to be. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love OWASP. I think it's really cool to be part of that gigantic um, global org kind of thing. So some numbers. Chapters, we're currently at 228. These were as of September the 14th. So they might be up or down a couple, but that's pretty darn close. Um, obviously, the US has the most chapters, followed closely by Europe. APAC, Middle East, and Latin America all kind of neck and neck, and then Africa, Canada, Caribbean, and there's one virtual chapter, which makes sense. You don't need like two. And just to see them percentage-wise in a nice pie chart for those people who like pie charts, this are those same chapter numbers divided up into, into percentages. Projects, there are 110 projects as of also September 14th, I think, of the first town hall. Um, we have 16 flagship, 33 uh, lab, and 61 incubator, which is probably about makes sense. Easier to get an incubator, harder to get the flagship. Uh, OWASP core purpose, I was actually on the board when we did this years ago. Um, we sat down and hired a consultant that set up a core purpose and our core values, and the core purpose that we ended up getting at and voting for on the board was be the thriving global community that drives visibility and evolution in the safety and security of the world software. That's the mission or core purpose of OWASP. And then we came up with four core values, open, innovation, global, and integrity. I won't bother reading the sub bullets, but it's all on the About OWASP page. And I think anybody who's familiar with OWASP, this shouldn't be any kind of radical news. Um, and when I was doing the town hall meeting deck initially, I sort of thought it started to think about like what are the like the major things of OWASP, right? And what does all this mean? I think there's really three primary pillars to OWASP, right? There's tools, which are our projects, and those are th ideally things that help someone in a security space solve a, a particular problem, right? If I want to learn how to do like uh, if I want to learn how to hack a website in a modern kind of framework, I'm going to use Jewshop, right? Those kind of things. And then education, which is really our chapters and this thing right here, our events, right? It's how we get the education out to the world. And then the, probably the biggest pillar is a community, right? And that's all of us working together to get this big job done. And honestly, without the community, one and two don't happen. So where does the staff fit in? So I'm going to run through all the staff, say what they do, um, so that you have an idea of who does what and who's on first, uh, if you know the old uh, bit. Don Aiken. Don Aiken. Give it up for Dawn Aiken. <laughs> she's, she's our community manager. She's chapters, chapters, and more chapters. Um, she does a ton of work in Salesforce. She's worked on the registration for our global events. Uh, I put data quality in her because she will find that one T out of the 40,000 T's that isn't crossed and pointed out to you, which I love about Dawn. Um, and if you've ever done any kind of financial or operational supports, you've more than likely interacted with Dawn. Reimbursements, you need something signed, whatever, it usually goes through Dawn. And if you don't know, it goes Yeah, even if you don't know, it goes through Dawn. <laughs> um, Harold? Harold Blankenship is uh, Projects, Projects, and More Projects. <laughs> Give it up for Harold. He also helps do a lot of technical support and IT-ish kind of things for all of the various and sundry tools and services that we have at OWASP. And if you're a project leader and you've done some kind of financial or operational thing, you've interacted with Harold or had a project review or any of those kind of stuff. Kelly? Yeah. Stand up, Kelly. Come on, stand up for the time. Yeah. She's the reason we have a whole hall full of expo people. Um, she does membership and corp both individual and corporate, and she does donations and endowments. So she's like one of the people that gets funds to OWA. So we really like Kelly. She's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's true. At first I thought it was the LA chapter, but then I got confused. <laughs> Karen is our executive director. She's obviously the team leader for the staff. She's an advocate and facilitator for an open source community. She can't whistle like that. <laughs> she is the liaison between the board and the staff. I assume you can't whistle like that. I've never heard you do it. She really is. Um, and she's working on the organizational and structure and processes all around the foundation. We want to make things better for you. Absolutely. Yeah, 
Yep. I'm Matt Tassaro. <laughs> I'm the director of community and operations, so I work on community growth and outreach. I do a lot of business operations, really exciting things like you know signing contracts and sexy things, and then our infrastructure. And then Lisa Jones, the newest member of the group. Uh, as of a couple weeks ago, I don't remember, very recently she became a full-time October 1st. So not all that very long ago, we added to our staff, and that's Lisa. She's assisting with sponsorships, uh, especially regional events. She's working with Harold on projects, so we'll have a little more love on projects. And she's been assisting wonderfully with global events like this one. So thank you, Lisa. Um, we have two contractors, Virtual, which is an outsourced uh, accounting firm and does uh, like the financials for us. And then Hugo Costa, if you've ever been around at OWASP, he's been doing graphic design for us for quite some time. Yay! So show me the money. Um, this is the, the financial sources, income sources for the foundation and where their, their major categories are. So obviously the biggest one is the global conferences. That's what, 55.3%. Um, we have the regional events, which is at 26.3%. Yeah, great job. Yep. Yeah. Membership is 17% and then a nice little sliver for endowments, which we'd like to be bigger, but we'll get there. Anybody that works for a company that has any kind of charitable contributions or nonprofits that we've been using some of our open source projects, we'd love to do that. Love to sign you up. Call me. <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've done that off and on, but it's been. Yeah. It, grant writing is a very particular skill that I'm not sure how many people actually have that are. You have people in the community that do that. Okay. Yeah. And then on the expense side of the house, uh, not too surprisingly, things like this global uh, AppSec event are one of the largest expense categories, uh, followed by regional events, also not too surprising. Uh, overhead and general admin, professional services, community outreach, and then chapters. So there's our major expenses, just so everybody knows. What does chapter expense mean? What does chapter expense mean? Those are, are those... So that's outflows of cash related to a chapter something, per, usually out of a chapter fund, like your, your balance, right? It could also be other non-things, though, like our Meetup Pro is paid for by the foundation itself, but it exactly. primarily is for chapters, or used by chapters anyway. Does that make sense? So you're, uh, you're including expenses for chapters that you're using that are not funded. Yes. It's been. It's between 182, I think. Yeah, I think the highest number we've gotten is 182. 182 is the highest. 165, one, yeah, it's right in there. It's been it's been bouncing kind of underneath 200k for the last four or five years. Things like that. Yeah, yeah, no worries. And then this is just the, those those things as percentages. Yeah, no worries. I'm half deaf though, so you gotta speak loud. And I'm, I'm being very literal in that. I'm quite literally half deaf. What? Huh? Yeah, only on this side though. It's kind of interesting. I'll tell you about it later. So I asked um, Virtual to give us numbers. If you look at this, oh, I think I have a pointer. I have a pointer. Yeah, this is just Woo! Really Tech.
Yes. He's recording this. I forgot about that. Thank you for keeping us honest. Yeah, that's true. So camera, stop the wireless. Take the mic away from her. So if, if you look at revenue from membership, that's his first column. Second column is donations. Uh, first column is 555,000. Second column is donations. That's about 41,000. Third column is the 10% from events. Or the, not the 10%, but the event it's percentage? It's the average of what we get from regional and global events, so you know it's not enough to cover our Right. Cost. The 10% is actually, I, I did that poorly. I shouldn't have named it that. But it's 183000 Our total income gives about 778 ish uh, Operating expenses of $1.3 million, which gives us a shortfall of, I can't read those numbers from the side, 523 and so just as a point of comparison, the amount, if you summed up all of the balances that chapters have allocated to them, that was one million, one million dollars, 20,000. So, go ahead, Travis. Yeah. You shouldn't. <laughs> that, that, they're not meant to be added. This was literally like, this, is, this particular is a scale. This is not a, I mean, it is a number. So, and when we say, I'm sorry, but when Matt says we get, this is foundation. This is not overall income. This, this is, is foundation just that is not your money that is given else. to the foundation to spend on behalf of the foundation. This does yeah. not include income from regional events that you guys get 90% of. This does not include, this includes the 10%. That's it. I was confused because, like, that includes the fund allocated chapters, right? Yeah. I just no, and this is what we have in reserve sitting out there sure. in chapters. And just so most people know, we have 228 chapters, as Matt has said. This, this money belongs to about 20 of them. So the rest of them are in a negative or zero. Or very so, low balances, yeah. And so we're trying to find with the community and with you guys a way it. to balance that and be more equitable and more distributive, if you will, of the community. I, we know you guys work hard and produce, you know, what you produce, but we have to find a way to be more equitable and, and to utilize this money to, you know, move the needle of our mission and vision up higher and more forward. Yes, Julian. Oh, wait. I'm going to repeat the question. Right here. Uh, how are you paying right for here. the shortfall? Right here. We are borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. We are I borrowing mean, from you. Yeah. That's so, like, when you said this, when I said, oh, yeah, well, you know, we forward the funds for your contracts and things like that, and then Travis said, yeah, well, we can do it ourselves, and I said, well, Travis, you are already doing it yourselves because we're using your funds because we don't have them. Yeah. Yeah. It got uh, moved. The, it got wait, shifted wait, in 2015. I'm repeating the question. Wait. Okay. Just so that people can hear. Because we're recording. The, has the ratio always been the same for the split on regional events was your question, correct? Global events, global events, and go. Regional. And regional too, go. So <laughs> what we understand today is that in Rome in 2015, there was a board meeting where the regional or the global event uh, split was modified from a 60-40 to a 90-10. Um, and so we, the foundation gets 90% of the income and 10% goes back to the chapter. I do want to say thank you to the Belfast chapter, to the London, Cambridge, um, chapters for APSIC EU this past year and to Travis again for this year because most of those chapters have donated their funds back to the foundation. And the, yeah. the original splits, yes. <laughs> it was September of 2014 when the original splits were changed the first time. Uh, that was the first time we even really talked about regional events. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, actually, a correction historically. Yes. It is 90-10 today for no, regional no, events. No, no, I'm saying back you then. get 90. Yeah. We keep 10. It's a little more history. Yeah, well, that was the last time, the, or the first time the board voted on that. That was a, but you were talking about a very the casual days of OWASP. <laughs> I don't think we recorded board, board votes back then. I don't know. I don't remember. I was on the board. I should, but I honestly don't remember. Okay. So are we good on this one? Oh, we got another Travis. question. Yes, uh, we'll get you next. Have 
So as I recall the way the splits worked, it is 90-10, but there's also the idea of a, a, uh, surplus, surplus. a surplus or a profit on the conference. And then if you, br if you break that profit or you beat that profit, then it goes 90-10. That's how so much. You want my mind? Because the profit estimate was low oh, enough. Oh, to give it to Travis? Or was, uh, let me put it this way, uh, numbers. It's too late now. Yeah, it's too late now. So the, the, yeah, we got obvious coming up. Anyway, the the way it worked is you said your conference is going to make $100, right? And you make the $100, fine. It's a, it, it was whatever the split was in fact that I don't remember what it was, to be honest with you. But if you made like $200, then of that bonus 100 you got 90%. So that's how you could get these like large lump sums. Because if you could beat what the projected profit of the conference was, you got 90% of that beating of the expected profit. And that was a very... Um, um, Successful conference. I mean, I, I was at that one. They made and loads of money. 40. Yes. 60-40, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mic's not. Oh, it is working. Sorry. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, that thing in your hand is a mic. <laughs> yeah. So, we good? We're recording this, though. You're, I don't need I one know. either. But. And then once we go <laughs> over the surplus, it's a 60-40 split. So, But yep. we want you as a community to work with us because we want to establish what those levels should be. Um, and what we will do is do a really deep dive, a big deep dive into the P&Ls of the conferences and kind of take a look at what it costs us to do these things and where we think we really should be. You're very logical, great people. You want the foundation to flourish, so let's work together and figure that one out in the best way possible. Yep. Oh, and these are those numbers in numbers as opposed to pretty graphs. <coughs> Mostly for posterity. Because um, this is all posted on the, by the way, there's a town hall wiki page that all these things are posted on. Um, and then I just stuck this in because I have a captive audience and haha, too bad. Um, the global board elections are going on, so if you haven't voted yet and you are a member, vote. please vote. vote. Right? You can it read the Why privilege. Me pages and hear the interviews that are all on the board election wiki page. All right? And you should have gotten a, a thing to vote because I sent them out on Monday because that's when voting started. Do we have any candidates in the room? Two One, candidates two. in the room. Two candidates oh. in the room. Let the record show that the crowd pointed at Martin and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's open. It's on the web. Yeah. Everybody knows who the candidates are. Yeah, there's if you no can secrets. see them face to face, you can talk to them before you vote. Yeah, true enough. I endorse Martin. <laughs> but they're not allowed to endorse other people. Oh, I I, I <laughs> let the record show. <laughs> All right. Let's talk a little bit about plans. Like, what has the staff been working on, thinking about, and how to further and in what better things to further our mission? Uh, another Gene Kim quote: "To tell the truth is an act of love. To withhold the truth is an act of hate, or we worse, love apathy." We Gene Kim. I do like Gene Kim. He's he's pretty awesome. We do man. too. He made my day when he live Thank tweeted you, my Ellen. keynote at LastCon. That was the coolest thing ever to have Gene Kim like go. This guy's doing talking sense. Like, woo! That was a high moment. So, projects update which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be Harold now, so just pretend I look like Harold. Um, we have three new confirmed projects since AppSec EU 2018. Oh, we didn't put the, the other, well, anyway. There's the other project news that we may want to talk about. Six projects um, in review status. There are two more projects in the queue. Um, Harold has been doing awesome work with Jira and Service Desk to move things out of the black hole that was cases in Salesforce where you got no real feedback and you couldn't check the status of them and moving them into JIRA. So he's moved the new project request out of the Salesforce cases. We and love into, using JIRA. We do like JIRA. Um, into the um, uh, new project request thing in JIRA. We also have a project graduation request thing now in JIRA. We're using that already for invoices, contracts to be signed, reimbursements. It's very nice because I never liked the Salesforce thing because you submitted a ticket and it went into this black hole. And unless I emailed you back, you had no idea what was going on it. And now with Service Desk and your login, you can not only see the status of your current ticket, but any past tickets. It's really nice. And, it and gives any way communication better visibility. we have within the, within the staff on what we're doing with your ticket is always communicated back to you. 
Yep. So you can yeah, if we make an update or a comment, about, you get an email. lack of receipt or did he really buy pizza? <laughs> right. Just kidding. Um, Harold has been busy cleaning up the project data in our CRM, i.e. Salesforce, which is ongoing. Um, he's collecting suggestions for new projects, which is always ongoing. Um, and he's been much better than we have been in the past at making sure that the reimbursement requests for the projects are handled in a timely fashion. And to that note, I'll say it here because I'm remembering it and I probably won't remember it later. One of the things I did is I was dinking around in, sale, in service desk um, looking for an old ticket and just looking for something. And I realized there's this whole metric side of service desk that I never even looked at. Um, and we had 900 odd tickets that were done but not closed. And I went through and cleaned up those 900 tickets and got it down to 80 some odd. And so now our reporting can actually highlight those things that got missed, which were kind of falling through some cracks from time to time. So now if something gets missed in one of our, uh, you know, either, well, twice a month, Payment cycles, I can actually see it. Before well, it was in the sea of 900 requests yeah. and it was very hard to actually surface. But we're changing our process too. So we're reconciling every month. We're reconciling JIRA every month. So if there's any tickets that were submitted in JIRA that were not closed, we're gonna find out why. Matt and I sit on uh, <coughs> a conference call with our accountant for several hours and once a month and go through all the JIRA tickets. We look at receivables, so if we have sponsors that are sponsoring your regional event, we go through all that with Kelly and say, where are we? Why aren't these people paying? Who has paid? What has been paid? And then we go with Dawn through all the chapters and make sure that the funding that's been allocated to the chapters has been recognized and accounted for in our QuickBooks. And then we do the same with Harold. So at the end of the month, usually it's the third or the fourth week, if you go on your wiki page and you double check your chapter, you double check your project, whatever's happened in that month, once the books have been closed for that month, you will see it reflected on the wiki page. And we're gonna work really hard to continue that. We need to reconcile every month, we need to double check everything every month, and, and we just want you to know that we are doing this so that we can be on top of things and we don't walk into the next month with a lot of garbage that should have been thrown out than a month before. Um, so, and Matt, yeah, Matt did an all-nighter one night. We just have to share some personal stuff right now. So Matt is a night guy. So oh he my. works really late at night. <laughs> and I'm an early morning person. So no, literally, I get up like at 3.30, quarter to 4, and Matt is just shutting down, and I'm kicking in. So it's kind of funny. We're open 24 hours, people. So um, it's just our work habit. The girls are telling me, shut up, shut up, shut up. But I just want you to know, we're here. We're on it. We're online. Can, can, can the sound guy mute her mic, please? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys only talk about one hour a day during that cusp when you're... No, he goes to bed and then he gets back up. And by, by I don't know, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, yeah, my 10. time, he's on my... I'm on the East Coast. He's in... Uh, you're Central. Not in Central. So by the time, you know, I'm cooking, I usually call him and say, hey, Matt, what's up? What are you doing today? And... He's like, yeah, I went to bed at 3 a.m. I was like, yeah, I know I saw because I was getting up and you were shutting down. And so, yeah. Yep. But anyways, we just want you to know we're here for you. We're doing our best. We're reconciling every month. We're trying to clean everything up. We want to report monthly. We changed the name of the reporting. Matt, you want to share that? Well, I don't remember what name I made it, so no. <laughs> <laughs> but we changed the name. We want you to, to double check your funding. Oh, we're that name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah what do we sheet. call it? Uh, I don't remember what oh, we called it. OWASP funding, I think. Yeah, well, it's on, we did, actually, that was one nice thing we did to try to make things simple. If you want to know what your chapter or project balance is, Google OWASP funding, and it's on the bottom of the funding page. Like, I put it in one, we, we I, Harold and I kind of went around with this. Click on your chapter, and it'll show you all the yep. detail of it's your chapter. It's at the very bottom of the funding page. Click we on have your the, project, it'll show you all the detail. It's every month. Once we close our books, it is up to date. Yep. It's what happens every month. Yep. But all we have to do is close our books and make sure. So if, let's say, Synopsis says, hey, we want to give Avi $5,000 for the chapter, or OR, excuse me, because OR is in char now, then, then we make that move, we close our books, and we post it up on the wiki. Yep. And there is a little bit of a time lag because we want question? them to actually close, obviously. The man in blue, what's your name? Joe. Joe. Nice to meet you, Jim. Well, that's not our problem. That's We're only reporting what happens. That's in the meeting tomorrow. <laughs> Is it 30? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a month behind. But as, as we close July, you will see it in August. Yep. Bannon, this month, I did not mention that tonight. We'll be 
Dawn was busy with AppSec USA. Can you imagine that? I know, it's crazy. She didn't take any time for you guys. As, just kidding. Yeah. I know you're all very busy, and you're working on great stuff, and, and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I would ask for is uh, in the Bay Area, we do actually have corporate sponsors, and I would like to have an up-to-date list at any month so I can thank them in our meeting. Like, we want to provide a value to them, which is, like, showing their logo, you know, telling them how much we appreciate their benefit. And uh, yep. some of those reports are a little bit delayed, so I'm wondering if there's a technical reason why that happens or if it's just, like, one of the things you're working on. It's probably, I would say, I, and this is really Kelly's bailiwick, so I would talk to her directly. And who's, unfortunately, she went out to get some food. But um, the two things I know can delay those things is, one, closing our books, and two, Getting a sponsorship and getting paid for the sponsorship are two different events that happen at two different times. So if you get a sponsorship from Big Corp and they take two months to pay, you're not going to see that for two months. Yeah. And we do, now the nice thing is, I mean, honestly, to be, I'm going to get like, God, this is, I can't believe I'm talking about this. I'm like talking like an accountant. Um, this, my life is to made a wrong, wrong oh, it's turn. Coming in. Um, we do accrual accounting. So actually as a little bonus to chapters and projects, we actually recognize the income. So you can start spending it if you get the 2000 from Big Corp before we actually even collect. Because on the books, we recognize it. That's just how accrual so accounting works. So once the invoice is issued, we recognize the revenue. Yep. Because we do accrual accounting, not cash accounting. So you should, so if someone donates in June and we close our books in June, you will know in July who they are. Yeah. And if you don't, look you guys, you can just call us. You can write us. Just say, hey, Karen, I'm having trouble understanding who donated to me. Kelly, who donated to me? I can tell you, Kelly sends out an email and she copies all chapter leaders in. Hey, by the way, we got a contract. So and so donated $2,500 to the Bay Area chapter. Let's all thank them. And she copies in the donators. You should be getting those emails. Well, maybe you haven't gotten any donations. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but we do do that. Yeah. It's hugely, hugely important to us. We walked around tonight and thanked all the sponsors. It matters to us. It matters to us, and it matters to us for you, too. So, yes, we want to thank them, and we want you to know, too. So, Kelly, uh, we, we had a big discussion, too, on staff of the difference between accrual accounting and cash accounting. And as soon as a contract is prepared, we recognize that revenue into your chapter. So it does. they don't have to pay us yet, but we still recognize it, and we do the transfer. Yes. Julian. From Australia. Yeah, really. I'm hey, it's Australia. Julian from Australia. Thank you. Good day, mate. Your question. Uh, so <laughs> just, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, just on that point, so you, you've got the balance sheet that shows the chapter funds. Is there a way of getting that granularized? There is actually, although I, I don't remember the last time we updated, it might be a bit stale. We do put a transaction report of all of the transactions that go against any chapter or project balance from all time. Because that would also help yeah. that situation because yep. they could see exactly when it was paid and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a very long PDF of all of those transactions. And we update that, I think, monthly, but it might not be that frequently. I don't remember, to be honest with you. But we're thinking of, like, creating chapter pages. So each chapter has its own page, and you guys go in and look at what's going on, and you guys can then write little things in there so your members can go in or your leaders can go in and check on stuff, and we can update information. Just kind of like your bank does when you log into your account. They send you messages. Hey, Travis. You're in a negative right now, so you might want to put some money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just talking. We, we want to increase our communication and our service to you, so we're thinking about different ways that we can do that. Yep. I and see we're having a whole leaders meeting outside in the cocktail area. Hey. <laughs> They're missing the accounting talk. I don't know what the heck's wrong with them. <laughs> God. Keep asking us questions. My life we're is really going you. wrong. Um, so rounding out projects. Uh, we have project graduation reviews for benchmark, dependency track, mobile security, testing guide, and glue projects all today. That was Harold's doing. And then we are restarting something that used to happen at OWASP and stopped happening at OWASP for reasons unknown. Uh, we started a, a, we did a project showcase or a track at the conference just about OWASP projects on Friday. We added that specifically to this event because we wanted to restart that. And it is our <laughs> desire and goal to keep that going going forward because... I, I mean, our projects are a huge part of OWASP, and it kind of, 
I've heard from project leaders who say, you know, I submitted for the CFP and I've run a project that's a, you know, a, a, a well-regarded project and I don't even get picked like WTF. Why, why is this going on? And I think we should, you know, promote our own. I have no problem with that. So we know what our pillars are, right? It's education, it's project, it's community. Those three are the main important elements of why OSP is what it is. And so, um, yeah, I had a light bulb moment with, with Harold one day and I said, why are we not doing like project tracks? Projects are everything to us. And it came actually from my wonderful experience at DEF CON, where people are like, we couldn't live without your projects. We couldn't live without your, your, you know, your top 10 or your zap or whatever it is they're working on, Juicebox or whatever. And I was like, why are we not like dedicating our conference a, a track to, to our projects? So Harold and I said, quick, can, what, what can we do? We'll do it on Friday. We have this room. Let's do some projects. So you'll see more and more of us promoting projects and project leadership and project information and project communication coming out of OWASP because that's really, you know, one of the major elements of who and what we are, what what brought us to this point today, right? The top 10. So, um, anyhow, yeah. Yep. That's projects. So, thank you, Harold, for all this awesome project work. Woo -woo. <laughs> Chapters update, which I'm going to be Don. Oh, wait, we got a question. Well, the comment is Who as good as the question. Who are you and where are you from? Adam Lewis, Chicago chapter. And th this is just a uh, props to project leaders. Um, o OWASP is all about community, but it's the projects to give the community credibility. Awesome. Thank you for that. And I, as a project leader, I fully agree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chapters update. So uh, I, if you do, don't know or weren't aware, Dawn has been going through, uh, well, I don't know how far back, how, 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 much, how much history do you really want? We did a migration between two different AMS things in Salesforce. AMS is an association management system, so it keeps track of our stuff about OWASP. And we migrated from system one to system two, and that was less than clean, um, to be nice. Um, and so Dawn has been going through this year all of the 220 odd chapters one by one, making sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Um, after this conference, she's gonna take a little bit of respite and have some family away time on vacation. But so about two weeks out from the conference, she's gonna start back up in this review of all the chapters. You've done US and Europe. Yeah, we did Latin America, but we haven't finalized it Yeah, we'll finish that up, yeah. And then, then in two weeks, APAC will start. Yeah. And we should be done by 2019. End of 2019, we'll be done, and we should have all of our books in nice, so clean order. So we've never audited the chapters. We have 228 of them. We've never audited them. We've never really looked at what's happened with them. Where do they sit? What do they do? And Dawn has been doing it meticulously. As we said, she will find the T now crossed. That's just a set of baseline for us to understand where the chapters are and what chapters do. Some of you come from chapters that are hugely, hugely uh, active, that have meetings every month, that have 100 people in your meetings, and you know you have sponsors, and then we have chapters that have maybe three and four people every other three or four months. And they're still successful in their own right, but they're very different, and they need a different kind of service from us than, let's say, Travis does from the Bay Area or Richard does from LA. So we're trying to understand that, and that's one of the reasons that Dawn is doing this cleanup, so we can set a baseline and say, okay, here are the different groups of chapters we have. We want to probably associate them very similarly like we do with the projects from a lab to um, flagship and kind of figure out how to best meet them where they are. Pro you know, small chapters are not less successful than large chapters, they're just different. So we wanna make sure that we meet people, that we contribute to people where they are and ensure that we are, as OWASP Foundation, extending the brand, the image, and the quality of who and what we are throughout the chapter of life. Yep. Uh, and the other thing she wanted me to mention is something that's actually been going on for quite some time. Uh, Tiffany did this in 2016 or 17, I don't remember when. Um, but we started this idea of a three leaders per chapter or project. And I need to qualify that because that's a, it's a, a special category of leader, i.e. for us as a staff, if we have to reach out to a project or chapter, we, and you have a board of 30 people, which you're welcome to do as a chapter. You have 30 people helping you, that's cool, but we're gonna pick we're going to ask you to pick three of those people to be your official sort of points of contact for the foundation. So we don't have to spam 30 people and, and have a back and forth. So it's more of a logistical and operational thing that lets us understand who we need to talk to at your chapter, particularly for things like budget and finances. 
Um, and if you want to have a large group of leaders that are called board members or the grand poobahs or whatever you want to label them, that's really cool. We're like, we don't really care. You're free to do whatever you want. But from an operational perspective, we really kind of have to have three people that are on point max per chapter. So or project. It's, yeah, same for projects and chapters. Send us an email, chapters. update your wiki, whatever it is, but just keep it up to date as much as possible, please, so we can talk to the right people. Just yep. to You're stealing my content. Oh, oh that's okay. Not, not later. <laughs> you're 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 doing a tease for the content. No, I love it. No, no, that's great. But I'm, that is that is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I, I didn't. You, okay. Okay. Tell us because because I well, contacted the Nova and the DC chapter and I was contacting the wrong people. So just tell us who we need to be talking to and who's running things and we'll contact them. Yep. Um, we want to help you, so help us help you. Yes. So Who are you and where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Jan Willems. I'm the new, one of the new leaders for the Mobile Security Testing Guy project uh, from the Netherlands. And my nice. question is basically, do we just have to update the wiki? Do we also have to email you guys on updates in there? Is just updating the wiki on leaders and stuff like that good enough? So, so the, the, the best way to get that done right now is to go to the front page of OWASP, and there's a contact us on the top middle-ish. Um, click on that thing, say, uh, for your case, a project, or there's a chapter, and say, hey, I need to change, you know, Johnny is now on my project, and Sally isn't, or whatever your deal is, and submit it. And it'll go to Harold, and he can fix it. Okay, so we already updated the wiki, so we figured we could do stuff ourselves in that sense. So my question would then be, are you guys monitoring those wiki changes? Yeah. And then the it, yeah, yeah. In all honesty, no. And one of the things... Yeah, and, and one of the things we're working on in the sort of next iteration of how we interact with, because honestly, like, when we were 10 projects and 20 chapters, like, monitoring the wiki was cool. We could do that. It just don't work anymore. So we're looking at replacing that system with something where you can make updates in a place, and those updates are propagated to all where they need to go. Right now, projects and chapters are in the wiki. They're in Salesforce. They're on Mailman. There's probably some other place. I'm forgetting where they are. So right now we have these multiple systems that don't talk. And that's, that's hurting us right now just from operational point of view and we're trying to fix that. But for right now, if you have those changes, let us know. Okay, then I'll definitely send an email because I have one more thing. Basically, uh -huh. we're trying to automate our build system as much as possible. Even though we're a documentation project, we've got a lot of interactive components, which means you need to automate that. Mm -hmm. And we kind of figured that all the information in the wiki is also extra. So one of our newest announcements that we did lately is that you just have to go to our GitHub project which means we navigate away a bit from the, the wiki because now we have to update two things. Yep. Is there a way you can open up APIs in such a way that we can actually automate that away? Because right now it's cumbersome for us to do it in two positions because we want to be content focused and not administrative focused basically. Is yep. there a way we can improve that? Yes, if you can wait like a slide. <laughs> and and not, not, not a great answer for projects, but I'll tell you where we're working towards, okay? Be so you, you are like on, on point. And by the way, I just wanted to throw this in, like, thank you to Dawn, because she has worked tirelessly yeah. this year sorting out all those chapters. So props to Dawn for that. She's a guideline woman, so if you're not going along the guidelines, you'll hear from Dawn. If you're doing the guidelines, <laughs> you're, good you're good to go. We had that conversation in the board meeting today where Travis said, well, I didn't know there were guidelines. I said, that's because you're following them. But if you don't follow them, you will You'll know. You will know. So, yes, you have a question in the back. Oh, we have one right here, too. Uh. Who are you? Oh, we got to make one in New Mexico. between being here and participating in the CTF. So I'm wondering, <laughs> yeah, her CTF. Um, <laughs> so I'm wondering, should I stay and will you guys talk at all about establishing a new chapter or would it be, I'd be better off like going offline for that? Okay. Okay, yeah. I will do that. Yeah, if you really want to do the CTF, find one of us in the next two days and we'll <laughs> talk to you about it. I mean, because right. I, I feel your pain. I've been there where like, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk to you. I've got a CTF, I was just going to the bathroom. Leave me alone. <laughs> Is 
She may not have an OWASP.org, but we, we can check with her. But you know the girl right here, Dawn? So just meet her in registration tomorrow or on Friday, and she will work with you. Yep. Haral, you give him a beer, he'll do anything for you. He's a great guy. Single malt scotch. No, no, no. Double single malt. <laughs> <laughs> we got a we got a question. Oh, oh go ahead. Sorry, I just want to go back for a second. What you were saying about automating the wiki. Oh yes. Is, is some of that going on? Because if yep. I remember a few weeks ago, pump the brakes. We're coming to it. Okay. I, I promise. <laughs> yeah, we got we got one here. Three liter thing. Yeah, yeah. Who are you? Where are you from? <laughs> I know, I know where we are. Yeah, Jim Weiler, Boston. So instead of three names that we constantly have to update, we have a OWASP, Boston at OWASP.org. How about you just, we give you that alias, and that oh, we, that constantly is updated with whoever's there. Is that all right? Uh, yeah, that really, that would, operationally, that would be kind of tricky. And it depends it how is? you implement that. Well, it depends how you implement that, that Boston. And, you and I can talk afterwards. I we'll, thought that would be easier for you, a single email that always gets to the current people. But, uh, like, what's behind that? Is it a Google group? Who manages the group no, for ownership? Uh, whoever owns that, one of us is the email alias administrator, and we can add people who is already somebody on the board, right? I thought that's, you give us the permission to update it. Well, the, the thing is, too, for particularly for, um, and sorry to get into the weeds, but particularly for reimbursements, we need two people to approve over 500s. So okay. I, I can't add uh, a, so the, a, a, a right. alias to two no, places. No, all right, all right. For that, they need to be named. Yeah. Uh, okay, all right. I can yeah. see that. Okay. I mean, it's kind of a weedy answer, but that's one of the reasons why. That's the reason. Yeah. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah, we can't badge right, Boston. Right, 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 right. And we're looking <laughs> to gamify more and more of your volunteerism and your activity within the foundation. So if we have a, a nebulous kind of email, then we won't be able to contribute to you. There are human beings behind that email. What do you mean nebulous? <laughs> well, if I don't know who they are, it's a computer. Yeah, so Matt, uh, as far as the, the three leader for you know attending, for example, today, mm -hmm. right, coming to AppSec, I don't want, yeah, and I sent an email about this. It's not right to, to create a class distinction within a chapter. If you have seven uh, volunteers that are all equal. Right. Part, like in, in LA, we have seven people. We're all board members. And now you're asking me to designate three to go to events. No, I'm sorry. There should be a maximum of three per chapter. I agree if yep. you, for, from a finan financial perspective. Yep. But that could be any three. That's so, true. So, so, so it's a it's a detail thing that can be worked out. Yeah, and and I'm and just and asking that you guys do that. Yeah, we will. And I, yeah. I've, I worked with Austin on the same thing because they have a whole bunch of people at Austin that do Austin, but there's actually only uh, Tiana, Kyle, and uh, third name I'm forgetting because I'm not good with names. Who are they? Are the official, you know, interact with payments people. So yeah, yeah, operation we can figure that out. I'm not concerned about the honorary memberships because, you know, we'll cover the other four people as yeah. a chapter. Now, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. I'm talking about I don't want to stratify. I don't want. I don't want to create, as I said, the class distinction. Everyone's a good, strong volunteer. You're asking me to pick the top three. That's not fair. It's well, it's it's I mean, more of just like designating. No, no, the three but there's still that. I, I get you. Uh, but people it, are it, sensitive. We have yeah, to respect them. I totally I totally hear that. I guess right. we that was certainly never our intention. It was no, more of just it, operationally. We just need to right, know who are the people. But practically speaking, as well, the same three people aren't going to every event. You have different people traveling all the time. Sure. So how am I going to say these three? That's I mean. So now we've got to split the tickets, put 200, it can't happen, but 200 right. So there's, there's technology that, you yeah, know, so yeah. that you say, hey, maximum of three per chapter, and whoever it is, it is, you yep. know? Yeah, okay. we can, we, those, those details we can certainly yes. work out. That is not, 
that's not a blocker at all. Oh, oops, I'm, I'm a few slides away from, from answering your question, so I apologize. I didn't remember my order wrong. So I'm, I'm actually just teasing you to keep you here. Um, and just a little, I did some math. I did this at EU, actually, and I did some math. And if Don only worked on chapters, and this was a smaller number of chapters, actually, at EU, and divided her time equally between that chapter, she would have all of 11 minutes per week to work on your chapter, which is another reason why we need to sort of, I'll, I'll, I'll say this in a few slides, we need to sort of simplify and streamline things. We've done a lot of experimentation over the years, which is cool, but at some point you sort of have to decide that this is a failed or a not failed experiment and, and solidify it. Oh, my point. The foundation is spread very thin, and all we're really asking for is two things. One, just a little bit of patience, because we know that our systems aren't perfect, and they're real, very well designed for a, a, a foundation about half our size. <laughs> and so we feel these growing pains as staff, and you feel them as a community, and we are doing everything we can as quickly as we can to fix them, and I think we're making strides, but we're not there. I'm certainly not happy with how things work internally, um, and you shouldn't be either, in all honesty, but just give us some patience, because we are working really hard to like iron those things out. And then two, let us simplify some things. And, and uh, staff needs a little bit of time to sort of streamline and provide you with good resources that answer your problems, but don't have this crazy diversity that I face today. And this is literal. We have Meetup Pro, we have multiple Meetup accounts that chapters own and pay for. We have Eventbrite, 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 and Eventbrite. I know of four separate Eventbrites besides the one that the foundation runs. We have RegOnline, 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 and RegOnline. Yes, we have four different RegOnline accounts and Doorkeeper. So those are all places where events could possibly happen and I might have to pay an invoice or do a refund or the, the money isn't connected correctly. And it's a madness when I get an email of like, hey, there's a problem with CFPs our event. CFPs on easy, easy chair, submittable, open CFP, OCMS. Yeah. Jira, so the, email. C event. C event. Bite your tongue. Um, <laughs> But so one of the things we're really focusing on is looking at this range of systems we have and narrowing them down to a couple that answer the 95% of the problems. And if there's some edge cases, we can work out the edge cases. But Eventbrite for 99% of our events is probably just fine. And if you use the foundation account as a chapter or event leader, you don't have to do squatting. I mean, you have to enter the event and say we're having it at this time and date and this is why it's awesome. But we'll handle the billing and we'll handle the banking and we'll handle the refunds and that stuff just happens. Otherwise, you have to like pay the thing and submit a reimbursement, and blah, blah, blah. it's just you get not. Calls not a happy on place. Christmas Eve. My event bride has expired. Can you please pay the bill? G give that man a mic. Give that man a mic. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll need a mic. Uh, oh, well, we're, rec <laughs> we're recording. So when you speak into the mic, it will okay. be recorded. Okay. Um, but no, uh, with the initiative of the Meetup Pro, I thought that was uh, the central point that we was actually leaning for when we, um, I guess, agreed upon that last year. Yes, well, that doesn't mean we don't have legacy, <laughs> to be real honest with you. And some we of those literally like- literally are cleaning up years of just putting out the fire, so quick open a new account, set up this, do that. So we're cleaning a lot of that up, and that's the result. And, and some of them have time delays, like LastCon has their own Eventbrite, which is fine, and they've had that for years, but I can't turn them off right now because that's two weeks from now. Well, three weeks from now, I can start talking to them about, hey, guess what? We're killing this account. You're going to move over to the foundation event, Bright, and they're all happy. But there's, there's just, you know, some of those are just literally like time lags because of when the events happen and when I can actually turn them off and turn them on without being interruptive, you know, or disruptive, rather, to the group that's running that event, Bright. And some of it's just like finding out who the heck owns it and they exist. I mean, these things kind of pop up like mushrooms, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just even our Slack channel was not owned and operated by us, but we're now moving forward and getting that taken Actually, care of. Actually, Harold did that yesterday. <laughs> so we, we had our own event right for a while in LA, and then when we found out that there was a centralized, yes. so there's an it, it is communications, yeah. right? Yeah. We switched and we haven't had a problem. Yeah. You know? So I advocate for everyone, just you know, use, use what's there. Take advantage of anything the foundation can provide. And, uh, you know, we, we based our whole AppSec California on that event, right? Yep. No problem. Yep. And, and in fairness to the, the community, we haven't been all that awesome about telling you guys those resources are available. Do, right? I mean, full disclosure, right? We could have been better about, and that's one of the reasons why we started these town halls and why I'm up here yabbering about accounting junk. Um, God help me. Um, anyway, but yeah, absolutely. 
So I'm going to ask if you guys need a technical break. My glass is running low, so I'm going to stop real quick and fill it. If any of y'all need to take a break, fill your glasses, get a beer, grab a quick pizza. We'll take like, what, five? Five, ten sure. Ten minute break. Five minute that's break. That's okay? Yeah. Fill up. Take a break. We filled your brains with lots of stuff.